Thank you for joining us on the Financial Pastor Podcast, where we discuss everyday truth from God's Word and how it applies to our daily living. And hope this will help you, encourage you, draw you closer to the Lord. God bless. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. We're going through Joshua, and we're on chapter number seven. Uh, Joshua and the Israelite army had just had a great uh, victory. They had defeated the walls of Jericho. It was an enemy that seemed almost impossible to defeat. It was very difficult to get into Jericho. The walls were, uh, there was double walled. They were several feet thick. There was no uh, way to get uh, through, but yet God allowed the walls to fall down. Uh, he showed himself mightily and they obeyed God. So they're listening to what God said, doing exactly what he wants in their winning victory. But a key to that is in Joshua chapter six, in verses uh, 18 through 20, God said, hey, don't take anything for yourselves out of the city. Uh, this is the first city that you've conquered. And the first city, I want you to see how committed you are, that the gold and all that stuff go into the treasury. It's not for you to take for yourselves, okay? Simple enough. He warned them, don't do it or it's going to cause you problems. So to defeat the... Uh, the Canaanites in Jericho, they won a great victory. And then we get chapter seven, there's another city called Ai. It's a smaller place. Uh, it doesn't look like it's it's going to cause any problems. And so we read in chapter seven, it says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. Uh -oh, that's foreshadowing of what happened. So they've already done something. We'll figure out what it is in a second. But listen to the confidence they have. The men went up and spied out, and they returned to Joshua and said, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or 3,000 go up and attack Ai. Do not worry all the people, for the people of Ai are few. They were overconfident. You ever got overconfident? One of the uh, biggest times you can expect a test, and you got to be very careful not to fall, is after a victory because you get overconfident. And so what happened was the Israelites sent out some some spies, they come back and they said, hey, there's not very many of them. Let's not even use the first stringers in this game, this battle. Uh, let's send in the third stringers. Uh, matter of fact, we don't even need 11 players on the field. Let's just send out seven. That's how confident we are we'll, we'll win this battle. So they, they send out uh, less people. We don't see them talk to God. We don't see... Uh, any interaction with God before they go to battle here. We don't see that God is with them. That is a foreshadowing of a bad thing to happen. When you go out, no matter how confident you are, no matter how small you think the enemy is, if God is not in your midst, you're going to have trouble. And so they go out, they fight, and they lose at AI. 36 men lost their life. This is all in chapter 7. You can read it. And Joshua and the Israelites melted. Their hearts melted just like the enemies had before. They say, oh my, what are we going to do now? All the Canaanites, the word's going to spread. They're bigger than us. Now they can defeat us. They're going to come and destroy us. Why did we come over across Jordan? Why do we do these things? They start questioning, like, God, why did you allow this? It wasn't God's fault. Uh, understand, folks, that nothing we do is God's fault. God will test you. Uh, God will test you just like in school. You have tests to see if you're learning so you can move forward in grades. God's testing you to make sure you're moving forward for him. He wants you to grow. He wants you to get to the place where he wants you to be, like graduation. But you got to learn as you go, and there's tests to make sure you're progressing. But in this case, the reason they lost is because they did not do what God said to do. A man named Achan had stole from God. And uh, verse number 10, Joshua was crying out to God about what are we going to do? And the Lord said in verse 10 to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. Get up. The reason you lost, you didn't do what I said. I said, don't take anything out of the uh, Jericho for yourself. And this man, Achan, has stole from me. I'm sure that Achan thought, man, look at all this stuff. Why does God need it all? Why can't we have it? I deserve it. Um, it's not a whole lot compared to the city, so I'm going to take some of it. And he did. It says in verse 20, and Achan answered Joshua, and said, I've sinned against the Lord of Israel. When I saw the spoils of beautiful Babylon garment, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, I coveted it and I took it. Three things happened. I saw it. Man, that looks nice. I really need that. You know, sometimes you can't help but look one time at something that's wrong. But the second time is your decision to do that. And uh, 
you can make a mistake and you can get it right. But if you don't uncover your sins, God is going to uncover it. So two things can happen. Number one, you uncover your sin, God covers it. But if you cover your sin, God's going to uncover it. And when he uncovers it, it's really bad. And so Achan hid his sin. Uh, he didn't tell anybody. God pointed him out by divine intervention. God allowed uh, Joshua to pinpoint that it was Achan's fault of what happened. That he had sinned. And Achan says, you know what? I looked at it. I coveted it. I want it so bad. I knew it was wrong, but I said, you know what? I'm going to take it anyway. And he took it and he hid it in his tent. He couldn't even use it. He thought he had something, but yet he had to keep it hidden. So he never got to enjoy the sin that was in his life, the, the money, that nice looking garment. And that sin caused 36 people to die. And, you know, for you and I, the, the biggest takeaway from this is you got to understand sin has consequences. God's word is there for a reason. Uh, sometimes we are enticed. When sinners entice thee, consent thou not sin. Uh, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And through sin, that is what happens. It will destroy you. It will kill you. It may not kill you physically yet, but it'll kill your marriage. It'll kill your uh, workplace. It'll kill your mind. It'll kill your heart. Kill your motivation. Everything. Kill you uh, mostly mentally, physically, spiritually. All of those things. And so when God says something, we need to do it, and we need to abstain from sin. And when you get involved in sin, like you make a mistake and do something wrong, like I hit a guy's car one time, and uh, I didn't tell him right off, I drove off, and the Holy Spirit convicted me, and I had to say, am I going to go back and tell him, or am I going to try to get away with it? And uh, I went back to him the next day. It took a whole day. Yep, that's me. I sinned. This was back in college. And I said, I'm sorry. I hit your car. I want to make it right. He said, I'm thank thankful that you did that because I had a, a, the police come investigate it and file a report. Well, I could have got in a lot of trouble, but I confessed it in humility. I had to go get him out of class. It was a big deal. But you know what? I made it right, and uh, it didn't progress any further. I uncovered my sin, and God covered it. When you uncover your sin, Lord, I've made a mistake right now. You might say, man, I've done a lot of stuff that I haven't um, confessed. I'm kind of hiding it. God knows all things. He knows what we're doing. He wants us to be open and honest. I know it's a sin cursed world. This is God speaking. I know you're going through difficulty. When you mess up, please confess it. Let me cover it. Move forward. If you do not, it's going to cause you problems. The sad reality in the, uh, the book of Joshua chapter seven, Israel lost 36 people because of sin. Achan, because he sinned and hid it, lost his life. His family suffered from it. Um, he lost all his possessions. And uh, we remember Achan, although he was a soldier, and he probably did a lot of good things. We remember him from this point in his life when he had unconfessed sin that God had to point out. When God says to do something, we just need to obey. Uh, it's for your good. It's for your benefit. It's for his glory. It's the heavenly way. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to us. That's just the way life is because uh, we don't have the mind of God. But it is good for you. In reality, if Achan would have waited just a couple days, God allows him to have victory, and he allows them to take the spoils of Ai. They get to enjoy it. So if he'd have waited a couple of days and did what God said, instead of stealing and having something he thought uh, was great, but he never could use it because it was buried and he couldn't show anybody, he could have had that and more and had it on and wore it, and he could have had it and enjoyed it, but he didn't do it God's way. Got to do things God's way. Uh, keep sin out of your life. If I regard iniquity in my heart, that's sin. The Lord will not hear me. Confess sin, get rid of sin, live clean, do right, love mercy, walk humbly, and uh, keep a clean life. When you mess up, uncover your sin so God can cover it. And uh, we're going to see that they obtained victory next in chapter 8 because they got rid of the sin in their life and they allowed God to be amongst them and uh, they listened to him. All right. Hope you have a good day. God bless. Thanks so much for listening to the Financial Pastor Podcast. Uh, if you have more questions or like to reach out to me, feel free to do so through email, brandon at alcova.com. Uh, you can also go to our website, victorybaptistcf.org. Also on Facebook, you can find us. And we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions. And remember, uh, to be encouraged, God loves you. God's got a plan for you. Just continue to walk closer to Him. God